it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers and we're zooming in and focusing in on a little bit more in depth on a great viewer question that we got in a couple of days ago however we had some video issues we posted uh three videos here on the peace and harmony channel that did not have sound so i apologize we had a malfunction of the audio piece so we are back at it here and hopefully you can see and hear me clearly so but we're zooming in and focusing in on what i feel is a great viewer question and that is to discuss the covert narcissist and the emotional distance the loneliness that you can feel when you're in a relationship with someone who is basically operating with a pathological sense of self-importance a lack of empathy and really kind of what comes off as a very sort of introverted or aloof or emotionally distant individual someone who does not register and discuss have communication on a two-way basis that involves validating and listening to your feelings or opinions or your needs so your feelings your opinions or your needs now really it gets that's about as basic as it gets outside of one's physical appearance um, and this can feel quite objectifying if you're in a relationship with a covert narcissist who has a pathological sense of self-importance, meaning it is always about them. So what, whatever, you know, interaction you might have or this relationship, it might be with a spouse, a family member, a coworker, a neighbor, there's this feeling of, of distance. Um, and emotional distance, which leaves a feeling of a gap, a delay, a lack of validation, a lack of being recognized for who you are. This person, you know, should know you, but they don't really know you. There's this feeling that they launch into self-absorption or oftentimes what is felt as being a recluse or being um, just sort of retreat, you know, being in a retreative mode. In other words, they're not really there. They might live under the same roof, but they're either in the garage or the attic or their home office or the basement, or they're out running errands and they're just not available. And they don't have a typical flow and rhythm and momentum to conversation. They're, you know, what you might perceive as the strong and silent type. They don't so much as say hello, they don't greet, they don't give eye contact. They're not there to help you in terms of validating or processing not only your feelings, but your needs, your opinions, your wishes, and moving forward, sort of a feeling of certainty and trust in the relationship. There's a feeling of uncertainty. You don't know where you stand with this person or a feeling of loneliness because they're withdrawing or they're withholding of validation and engagement. So there's a real feeling of being disengaged with this person. In fact, you know, there's people who go through years, um, you know, with such individuals and feel a disengagement that they're not really getting in sync through, especially through conversation, through discussions of emotions, through, you know, everyday sort of stuff. And you do need to have this conversation, at least, at least an acknowledgement or validation for a sense of certainty to be part of the relationship. If you're with in a relationship with someone who is, you know, constantly disengaged, they're, they're not communicating to you. People have a tendency to perceive this as an inadvertent attack. Um, studies have been shown that lack of communication or withholding of affection, withholding of communication, withholding of acknowledgement and validation is perceived to be in eliciting the same responses as the fight or flight, as if you were to experience a personal attack. Not a physical attack, but someone who is sort of attacking you emotionally. The body processes, processes this sort of treatment in much the same manner. So you feel that you're under attack, that there's something inherently wrong with you. This brings up a feeling of uncertainty and then of course the anxiety. And then as we know from our previous discussions that early age, um, you know, with withdrawing or withholding of affection 
and can create a feeling of truth and inherent shame or being flawed. And then a, a future hypersensitivity to such social interactions. In other words, everyday social interactions became become anxiety producing, you know, depression also, you know, sensitivity to events, things that people say or don't say, you know, that's really, you know, along the lines of what, how de de depression might be manifest. It's this hypersensitivity, this feeling of anxiety, you know, wanting to lash out, just having poor impulse control, having poor emotional control, lack of self regulation, being able to self govern and being feeling that you're in control of your emotions. So this withholding aspect can be very confusing and it can cause you to feel lonely and also, you know, doubt yourself that there must be something wrong with me. This person isn't communicating. Maybe I d must do something to get their control. So, you know, you have people who have immature mindsets who, you know, either, you know, do, do things to increase negative attention, i.e. get in trouble, being the rebel, being the troublemaker, um, you know, or, you know, creating a, a like force to their, what they perceive as their counter force where they become angry at this person, they become aggressive, they become hostile, they become chronically unhappy. This can be another example of how people try to fill the gap um, when there's this emotional distance, this lack of empathy, this lack of acknowledgement, this disengagement someone, from someone who is covert narcissistic. You know, covert meaning it's not re re you know, readily available, uh, readily accessible, readily perceived by the senses, um, not something that you can see or hear or taste about them that is, you know, out of, you know, trying to get all the attention, but they get the, all the attention through these underhanded means, through disengaging, through withdrawing, through retreating, through lack of acknowledgement and validation, even for the basics. So it's like an, uh, an un, an unseen way, an inadvertent or covert way that people will be get a lot of attention because their lack of engagement. So it takes people a lot of energy, you know, like pulling emotional teeth to get them to talk, to, you know, to um, be responsible, responsible, to be able to be accountable for a lot of the basics in relationships, especially if you have a working relationship with a spouse, someone who you know, you need to be in tune with things in your life. You need them to be aligned with either your, your life goals, your financial goals, your f family goals, you know, your goals for travel or what you want to do with the house or things that you want to do in your free time or on the weekend or things that need repair. So there's this need for attention, you know, it's, but yet, when you're in a relationship with a covert narcissist, it's like pulling emotional teeth. You have to jump up and down, do a triple back backflip, you know, give them the you know wake up call, and oftentimes this gets very exhaustive. Um, people feel like they have a big, huge pair of shoes to fill that's bigger than what they you know than what they are. They have to be bigger than life. They have to exert a lot of energy to try to get accountability and keep the relationship on a functional level. Now, some people, they, they love to have this, you know, they, they need a lot of space in relationships. Um, they like to have a lot of freedom. They like to have a say, you know, they like to call the shots. They like to be the one who's in control, in control of the finances, in control of the travel, in control of the religion, in control of the meals. You know, they, they want it all, but if that person is just there, for some people, that's enough. But for a lot of people, that is not enough. There, it becomes very dysfunctional. There's this feeling that you have to constantly do, that your work never ends, your day never ends, your uh, feeling of then um, being unacknowledged or not having any affection, not having any of the good stuff that should be part of a relationship is present. So there's the feeling of, of an absence. Um, and... You know, people either bring it up 
and are sensitive or they attribute it to some flaw within themselves. So people have erroneous thoughts that there's something inherently flawed about them, which is nothing could be further from the truth. You're just in a relationship perhaps with someone who is not even there or available as a sounding board to acknowledge and validate your existence, your presence, your strengths, your needs, your dreams, you know, your need for, um, to be guided. Um, you know, perhaps if you're a young individual, a young person, a young child, and you just need basic affection, basic guidance, basic, you know, communication with an adult, someone who has been around for a little bit longer, who can help explain some of your emotions, help guide you, help to teach you some things about how to navigate in the world successfully. So there's this void there. And so when there's a void, you know, the, the sky's the limit really in terms of what people can allocate to themselves, either too much negative or too much positive. There's this lack of coherence oftentimes in the relationship where people just feel that they have to move forward despite, and then have them deal with the after, aftermath. So there's this huge, you know, jigsaw puzzle effect where people are trying to fit in with this individual. And sometimes it does not fit. You can't fit a round peg into a round hole. You can't fit a round pair, you know, peg into a square hole. There's this feeling that things aren't a fit or that there's this void of communication and then hence a loneliness. So, you know, if you feel this loneliness, this inactivity, Oftentimes that is due to an emotional distance and being in a relationship with someone who has a lack of empathy and just a lack of the ability to meet you in the middle. It can become very imbalanced and very disharmonious when people are left to their own devices to try to fit in with this individual. But most, I would say most critically or most crucially is the feeling that is extrapolated or drawn out of this void, of this lack of accountability, lack of attention, lack of communication, lack of affection, is the emotions that then, you know, become self-sabotaging, which then lead one to believe that one is unworthy, undeserving, unintelligent, un, un, un. You know, people then define themselves not by who they are, but who they aren't. Not by what they have, but what they don't have. Um, not their strengths, but their weaknesses. So there's, there, there tends to be this plunge into self, you know, self, uh, self negativity and negative self bias, but also a learned helplessness that what somebody, what you do will never result in anything. So there's this feeling then of the, the, the areas of the brain that plan and, um, try to dream and wish and then look for the long range gratification are, you know, are not full on. They're not fully online. They're not fully utilized. They're not fully believed in. The self-limiting beliefs um, then tend to create a foundation of a, um, a identity that's based in negative self-bias and also the self-fulfilling prophecy that things are going to go awry, that things aren't going to work. And so you tend to then, people then, as a result, then tend to focus on the negative, you know, the catastrophic thinking, um, the uncertainty, the lack of trust. When it has nothing to do with you being inherently flawed, it's this lack of validation and a lack of mirroring, which is normal and natural. It's a, a normal part of social psychology and being able to fit in is being able to have this communication and some sort of understanding um, and, can, you know, shared feelings, shared experiences, shared feedback. You know, it's the concept that, you know, you don't feel that you're really sharing in something with them because they can't communicate. They can't communicate with their words, their eyes, their body language. It's just this feeling of disengagement or being ignored. Um, and this then can create a loneliness, which can be very confusing because then people then tend to feel there must be something inherently wrong. I am inherently unlovable or inherently flawed, otherwise known as shame or toxic shame. And then the sensitivity in this fear of moving forward, fear of social anxiety, having relationships, knowing how to operate within boundaries that help you to feel safe. Um, you know, the end and in control that things aren't going to go haywire, that you're not going to lose, you know, your impulse control. You're not going to lose control. So this feeling of 
there's then erupts a fear of losing control, overeating, overspending, undereating, underspending, these sort of, you know, um, extremes where there's a, a, a fear of lack of control and how that is manifest. So people then try to control other areas, which should be natural and organic. They try to, you know, hyper control these natural impulses and try to get a, a handle on things because as a reaction to and a, a need to survive and have a feeling of control so there, there becomes this aberrant behavior as a result or feeling lonely um, and then the sublimation or substitution for this relationship then creates um, relationship tangents that you know spark out in other areas where people can become obsessive compulsive addictive as a as a, a defense man as a defense mechanism for this void so you can see how this type of relationship can create a negativity it can create a void it can create an emptiness it can create an identity that feels shame-based which has nothing to do with reality it's not true that you're unlovable. It's not true that you're undeserving. It's not true that you're inherently flawed. It's this absence in the covert narcissist relationship that creates this sort of feeling and justification of such. So be very careful that you're not subjecting yourself to rigorous negative self bias. I guess that's a phrase I would say with, you know, meaning negative self-bias meaning you have a bias against yourself that there must be something wrong you know with you or that you then feel uncertain about your future or you're not living the life that you want because of this void because of a lack of empathy in a relationship with someone who might be as a covert narcissist this is your buddy back online with you here to help support and share videos and i hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe. And yes, thank you for those who have recently donated to the channel. Thank you so much for your support. It is great to hear from you. Sorry, we were offline for a day or so there. While we're getting the equipment back in good functioning working order. So I hope these videos do help. And thank you for once again for your support and your kind words and your comments and sharing your your specific um, either wounds, hurts, or victories. Because your, your comments, this is an interactive platform and so it's really wonderful to hear you kind of come out of your shell and say, oh, oh my God, I, I finally realized this is what was going on and this is why I feel this way. It's very difficult oftentimes to get through this confusion. So I am so glad that you have found the community and the forum and absolutely positively, if these videos have been a positive resource here on the Peace and Harmony channel, please do feel free to donate at the PayPal Donate Now button here on the About page at Peace and Harmony. And um, also definitely, you know, um, continue to give your, your questions, your comments, your inquiries so we can better assist you because if you have a question, chances are there are a number of other people who are thinking the same thing. They just haven't spoken up yet. So as you make your donation, um, you know, and because you found the channel a positive resource, please do feel free to put your inquiry in there so that we can address your question and help to better serve you here on the channel. Have a wonderful day. Peace out.